Welcome, and thank you all for joining us today to learn about the College of Engineering at Northeastern. Congratulations to you and your families for being admitted to our program. We have a very competitive program and you and your family should be very proud of the accomplishments. I'm Sue Freeman or Susan Freeman, the Associate Dean of Undergraduate Education for the College of Engineering. And today I'm joined by our Assistant Deans, Richard Harris and Rochelle Reisberg. We are all engineers and we are here to give you a thorough overview of what it's like to be an engineering student here. Our presentation will be followed by opportunities for questions. And there is a question and answer box down at the bottom and you can enter questions during the presentation anytime that you have them. Before we begin our presentation, let's look at what awaits you at Northeastern's College of Engineering. <laughs> All picture yourself here in our beautiful campus in the heart of Boston and with the amazing opportunities and experiences available to help you reach your personal aspirations and goals. Today we'll be highlighting the many aspects of an engineering education and experience at Northeastern from our flexible academics and supportive program to experiential learning with co-op research and even many clubs. Now I'm gonna turn it over to Assistant Dean Richard Harris with, where we, who will discuss our academic programs. Great, great. Thank you so much, Dean Freeman. That was a great opening and an exciting launch to this unique experience. And so what we wanna share with you here is an opportunity to be aware of the combined majors and what we call standalone majors. And so you'll see within this presentation and this slide, bioengineering at the top presents a unique opportunity for students who are interested potentially in pursuing genomics, genetics, and other aspects of bioengineering. But you can also have a combined major with bioengineering and biochemistry as a potential pathway towards medical school as well as to what we're seeing students consider. Then you'll see chemical engineering. Chemical engineering presents a unique set of options as well as a standalone major, potentially moving away from the so-called um, petrochemical processing, but looking at nanotechnology, uh, genetically engineered uh, pharmaceutical delivery uh, treatment, and so on. And so you'll see, again, the combined majors of chemical engineering and biochemistry, another great fit for students who have th thought about and are pursuing medical school. But then we also have a chemical engineering and bioengineering combined opportunity, chemical engineering and environmental engineering to understand again how the environment and the application of chemical engineering are interrelated or have an interdisciplinary impact. And then a unique fit within the space of computer science and chemical engineering that students may not often think about, but again presents 
opportunities that brings that intersectionality of chemical engineering and computer science together. And then last but not least, in many ways, engineering is applied physics. And so you'll see physics aligns very well with a number of our engineering disciplines. And in this case, that's the uh, circumstance between chemical engineering and physics. And then we move on to civil engineering. Civil engineering here presents a unique opportunity for you to focus on areas like uh, structural engineering, uh, infrastructure, or transportation or traffic engineering. And while I neglected to mention it, bioengineering is similarly set up to have concentrations. Concentrations in the case of looking at um, biomechanical or biochemical engineering, cellular and tissue engineering, and biomedical uh, engineering. So it presents, again, unique areas of concentration. And so civil engineering does that within the space of infrastructure or structural engineering and traffic or transportation engineering. But you also have the benefit of looking at a combined major between civil engineering and computer science. Great opportunity, again, to take advantage of how you see the intersectionality of civil engineering and computer science. And then for those of you that are looking at both the heart, the, I would say, the uh, aesthetic aspects of how architectural studies align or are uh, integrated with civil engineering presents a great opportunity for that civil engineering and architectural studies combined major. And then we go down to computer engineering. Computer engineering here is the sweet spot between hardware and software within the College of Engineering. It presents a great opportunity for students that are thinking about pursuing areas like uh, cybersecurity, uh, areas that present unique opportunities like data analytics uh, and so forth, and presents also areas of robotics that students might be thinking about. And so you'll see for students who really want to delve deeper into software code writing and programming, we have the combined major of computer engineering and computer science. The only caveat to that is you must come through the College of Engineering in order to be able to pursue the combined major of computer engineering and computer science. And then, as I mentioned earlier, we see physics also presents a combined major as an interdisciplinary, op interdisciplinary opportunity with computer engineering. Then we move to electrical engineering. In the case of electrical engineering, again, it's more on the hardware side when thinking about computer engineering, but it also moves into its own space. Looking at electrical engineering is a unique opportunity as we move away from uh, the gas combustion engine to the gas electric to then the all electric and how that then positions us as we talked about earlier with chemical engineering, with the opportunity for a hydrogen fuel cell technology and automotive technology. So you start to see how interdisciplinary engineering tends to be across and within the different disciplines. And so here you see students are able to pursue a combined major of electrical engineering and computer engineering, a combined major of electrical engineering and physics, and then a unique fit for those individuals who really wanna pursue and explore their creative uh, interests, electrical engineering and music. In fact, we have companies like Bose Corporation that are commit, connected to our co-op program, really seeing the value of engineers coming through uh, electrical engineering and then having music. But imagine uh, in our own uh, unique um, FYI, I guess I'd call it a little bit of trivia, you have individuals like Will I Am from the Black Eyed Peas, who's actually an electrical engineer. You have Herbie Hancock, uh, a world-renowned uh, jazz fusion artist, who's also an electrical engineer. And very few people don't realize that even Will Smith started with an electrical engineering pathway coming through before he went into entertainment. So again, a real unique pathway that we're able to present when we're looking at electrical engineering and the arts like music. Then you see environmental engineering presents a unique opportunity for health science and landscape architecture. Again, the symbiotic relationship between the environment and our health and the health of the planet. And then industrial engineering, uh, which myself and Professor Sue Freeman are industrial engineers. And I neglected to mention that Dean Riceberg is actually an electrical engineer. But industrial engineers focus on what I call 3M plus 1E materials, methodology, manpower, and equipment. How do you combine those four variables in order to create optimization, economy of scale, and efficiencies? As industrial engineers, we are in all aspects of different industries and present a unique opportunity for those individuals who may wanna be involved in understanding scalability and economies of scale 
prototyping proof of concept means one or two, but then the industrial engineers come in and understand how do we produce and replicate millions, if not billions, of what we're designing through that proof of concept. But it also can be used in the financial services sector, in the healthcare industry, and a broad array of different in industry pathways. And then last but not least, mechanical engineering presents a unique opportunity, especially if you're thinking about aerospace technology, aerospace uh, interests and industry. It connects with many of our co-op partners like um, Tesla Corporation, who also is connected to SpaceX, as well as NASA, JPL, uh, Sikorsky Aircraft, as well as AV, uh, GE Aviation, and many others. So a great foundational opportunity for those interested in aerospace. But looking at the combined majors, you have mechanical engineering and history as a unique fit, again, between the social sciences and uh, a STEM-specific discipline in engineering, and then design aligned with our College of Arts Medium Design, where if you're interested in product design and development, and then fundamentally physics, especially Newtonian or mechanics that aligns with mechanical engineering. So let's go on to the next slide so we can see a little bit how you can also pursue minors. So the way we're structured, we have a great curriculum that affords you the ability to pursue a minor without having to call, uh, take additional courses above and beyond your curriculum, or incur additional costs. It's built in and you'll see that as we go through this process. And so some of the minors that you may wanna consider are aerospace engineering, as I mentioned earlier. While it doesn't have to come and be aligned with mechanical engineering, you have the benefit of pursuing that aerospace engineering interest as a minor as well. And then at the top, you'll see the social sciences, the arts and humanities, and just want to make sure you realize that as engineers, you don't have to dedicate and commit exclusively to technical interests, but can also pursue those other aesthetic and or social science, arts or humanities interests that are featured here and beyond. So these are just examples of those that have been most popular with our engineering students. But again, there are almost 70 to 80 minors across the seven different colleges. And so in moving forward in the next uh, slide, you'll see how all of this begins with their first year support. First year engineering learning and innovation center, which provides a opportunity to do project-based learning, presents an opportunity for you to engage in ways that put you in teams and help you to understand how engineers design, develop, create, produce, innovate, but then how we have to present and how you present that to your teammates and others. And so all of this leads to a 98% retention rate within the first year, freshman to sophomore retention, which exceeds the national average. And then you see all of these supporting resources and programs below that we can discuss during the Q&A. And then last but not least, in this part of the presentation, you have an opportunity to be able to look at living learning communities where you can actually be co-located with other engineering students or if you're not interested in being uh, roommates with other engineering students, there are a, minor, a diversity of different learning communities, LLCs, as we call them, that will afford you the ability to identify your interests and how that will fit into the theme of your living learning community. We have the Women in Engineering program, a unique opportunity. We have over 36% young women in the College of Engineering, which exceeds the national average, which is in the 20 percentile range. And then we also have multicultural engineering, which presents an opportunity for you to develop cultural competencies to become global in your focus as future engineers. And then the honors program that presents a unique opportunity based on you being invited into the university honors program, which is uh, identified by the university honors uh, pathway, but you can gain admission if you are not invited in as an incoming first year student. You'll still have an opportunity at the end of your first year, so freshman fall semester, spring semester, and the beginning of your sophomore uh, first semester. You'll be able to apply. You'll just need a 3.8 uh, uh, GPA at that point at the college level. And then last but not least, you also have university honors uh, tied to Latin honors, which is the only Latin honors uh, that goes on your resume. All the other honors end up on your college transcript as opposed to your diploma. And then we have honors that are specific to each of the engineering disciplines. 
Tau Beta Pi is the overarching engineering honor society. Some of you might have heard of Phi Beta Kappa, which is the social sciences, but in engineering, Tau Beta Pi. And then each discipline, like electrical and computer engineering, has Eta Kappa Nu, Chi Epsilon, and others that are specific to each engineering discipline. So a lot of opportunities to engage in that honors environment if that's important to you. And so that presents a unique part of the resources here within the um, Northeastern COE program. And then last but not least, the sophomore year, your ability to start preparing for your first co-op. And you'll hear more about that as we go through the presentation and we do some Q&A. Next slide. We have a flexible first year uh, based on, again, what we talked about uh, previously. Uh, introduction to the study of engineering is actually provided by your uh, academic advisor. They actually provide a one credit course uh, once a week, presents maybe about 19 to 20 students, and that's where you have a chance to explore. So you can come in declared in a specific discipline in engineering, or you can come in undeclared, and that presents the opportunity for you to be able to engage during that first year as to defining what your passion and what your interest might be. And then we touched a little bit in the previous slide about cornerstone uh, project-based learning, uh, part of the first year engineering learning experience. And so this is engineering design focused on developing opportunities. In some cases, it can focus on developing tools and the skills with those tools like AutoCAD and SolidWorks. But again, it's project-based learning, working in teams of two. And then you'll see we have our calculus, chemistry, and college writing. Those are opportunities if you're taking AP courses, that if you get a four or higher on the AP exam, you can actually get the credit for that course going forward. So in the case of Calculus One, if you're taking Calculus AB on the AP exam and you earn a four or greater, you can get the credit for Calculus One coming in the door and then go right into Calculus Two. The same holds true if you're doing Calculus BC. And so you can get the credit for Calculus 1 and Calculus 2, again, as a flexible first year, and go right into either differential equations and linear algebra or Calculus 3, depending on your program of study or your specific engineering discipline that you might have identified that early. And the whole, same holds true for the chemistry, your college writing, and physics. Uh, as I jump down to the spring semester, physics in this case is calculus-based, so it's both physics C that you would have to take in the AP exam, and that would be for both electromagnetism as well as mechanics, and that would provide an opportunity for you to get credit for physics and the corresponding lab that goes with it if you earn four or higher on those AP exams. And then Cornerstone 2 is an engineering problem-solving opportunity that presents, again, tools like C++ and MATLAB developing skill sets in order to solve problems of a higher order and develop analytical capabilities. And then last but not least, we have an elective. Uh, to put it in simple terms, these electives are social science, arts, and humanities. We call it New Path, but all students coming through our program at Northeastern have to pursue a New Path uh, series of courses. And you can also use AP courses like US World History, uh, macroeconomics, microeconomics, uh, AP philosophy, AP psychology, and the list goes on. As long as you earn a four or greater, that can also satisfy that elective. And so you can earn and bring in up to 32 AP credits uh, or 32 IB international baccalaureate credits. Those international baccalaureate uh, credits have to come in on the HL, high level courses, and you have to get a five or higher on the IB course and then transfer credits if you're taking any dual enrollment at college with your high school it has to come in on a college transcript with a C or better. Let's go to this next slide so that we can conclude part of what we saw at the beginning if you paid attention to the um, video you saw an ecosystem of entrepreneurship and so here within the College of Engineering we have the Sherman Center for Engineering Entrepreneurship Education provides a unique opportunity and you'll see featured here someone that took advantage of this full ecosystem, Carlos Fuentes, who actually worked also with the group called Generate. And these are students just like yourselves who actually will support non-technical students to be able to develop their ideas. But in the case of Carlos, he was a mechanical engineer 
who had his own idea of developing a unique watch, a custom watch, if you will, and in that process was able to launch this unique product that he's able to now claim ownership and inventor status for. And so you'll see the last thing on here is Mass Challenge. This is a national uh, opportunity where you can get prepared in order to understand how to compete in order to secure funding. And that may come through invent in, uh, investors, angel investors, and others. Uh, and so that presents, again, the ecosystem that we really try to provide for you as engineering students here in the college. So I'm going to transition over to my colleague, Dean Reisberg. And thank you so much for spending this time going forward with this part of the presentation. Thank you, Dean Harris. Um, now I'd like to talk about uh, our co-op uh, program. This is really the most unique aspect of um, Northeastern. Uh, we're world renowned for it. And it's really integral to your full experience at Northeastern. Um, so at the end of the freshman year, you select your major. Uh, then you select the schedule that you'd like to be on. Uh, there are three uh, basic options for you. There's the four-year bachelor's program that includes two co-ops, and a co-op is six months in duration. While you take uh, your co-op time, you're immersed in industry or government sector or research. Uh, you're paid for that uh, by the um, company or um, research institute. Um, you don't take classes during co-op, uh, so you don't pay tuition. So um, one option, again, is the four-year program with two co-ops built into the schedule. Or another option is the five-year program with three co-ops built into the schedule. And finally, um, we do have the possibility for a student to do a plus one. And that would be four years to complete their bachelor's, including two co-ops, and then an additional year to finish their master's degree. About 84% of our students do at least two co-ops. Um, some, of course, do more. If they're in the five-year program, they'll do the three. Um, we have uh, relationships with over 2,000 uh, co-op employers um, across the world. Uh, the average salary, uh, typically for your first co-op, it's in the uh, $18 an hour range, and most students do work 40 hours a week. Again, they don't take classes while they're on co-op. And then when they get to their last co-op, uh, that can be in the uh, $20 to $30 range. Um, and again, they're spread all over the world. So now let's just take a quick look at a video uh, to hear what our students say about co-op. On my co-op, I worked at SimLogix, NASA JPL, PricewaterhouseCoopers, iRobot, WSP, Starry, the Massachusetts General Hospital, Suffolk Construction, Bose, SpaceX, Bluebird Bio, Hasbro, Flex, Amber Student, Amazon Robotics. I worked on Blackhawk Helicopters, G Therapy, HydroPower, Toys, the Internet of Things, the Mars 2020 Rover, Wireless Internet Service, Mobile Dentistry, Optionetics, Running Headsets and Sleep Headsets, Manned Space Flight Capsule. Co-op is everything. It's definitely one of the reasons why I decided to come to Northeastern. I think in class we learn a lot of theory and we learn, you know, some great laboratory setting applications. But it's not really until I went on co-op that I could say, oh, I totally see how that theory really applies. During classes, the exams are tough to study for, but seeing all of that come together and make something to better the world was really eye-opening to me. Co-op matters because it really helps you understand what it is that you're going to essentially do as a career. You can do something on co-op and absolutely love it and be like, that's what I want to do for the rest of my life. Or you could do something on co-op and be like, you know, that really isn't for me. And then you have so many more co-ops to try other things out and you can actually figure it out before you enter a workplace. Now I'm a fourth year and I came in as a freshman and what I want to do now is very different than what I wanted to do then. And definitely those co-op experiences have helped. The managers here cannot say enough about the Northeastern students and students coming into Bose. They bring such a breath of fresh air. I am a research engineer in the wellness division at Bose in applied research and concept development. Engineering classes are tough, obviously, and 
sometimes that can be overwhelming, but realizing that there's sort of a light at the end of the tunnel and that being an engineer is awesome <laughs> is sort of what has made me love co-op as much as I did. Bose has been really well known for our noise reduction technology. We're always trying to do it in lower power and smaller form factors. We've made huge progress in the past six months and the work frankly would not have gotten done without the help from Northeast Co-ops. Once you go on a co-op, and realize that what you're capable of is so much more than you think. You come back and apply yourself even harder. In my four years here at Northeastern, I had the privilege of doing two different co-ops, which prepared me for my next step in life and gave me so many things to talk about in my interviews. And I'm happy to say that I was accepted to several medical schools and even got a full ride scholarship at one of my top choices. Co-op is my guiding light right now. I put it first on my resume as my experience because you have the opportunity to be like, oh, I was an engineer. As of right now, I have about 18 months work experience. Having that skill set behind me and having these three references is such a great way to set myself aside from everyone. Because of my third co-op at SpaceX, I actually was able to convert that to a full-time offer for after I graduated in January. I was able to close full-time contract 18 months before graduating, which is something that would have never happened in such a co-op. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that uh, presentation about co-op. Um, now, I'd like to talk about a couple of other topics briefly and then get us to the Q&A part of the webinar. Um, first, let me just uh, let you know that there are over 250 um, student organizations on campus. Um, some of them are sports oriented, some are music, theater oriented. Uh, we sponsor um, over 50 uh, organizations, Student College of Engineering. And uh, they span the range of different professional societies, um, honor societies, affinity groups like Society of Women Engineers, Black Engineering Student Society, Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers, um, and various competitions uh, such as uh, FIRST Robotics. Uh, so if you're involved in FIRST, uh, you can continue with our Neutrons team. Um, we have um, competitions uh, that involved um, uh, the Paradigm Hyperloop, uh, which is an amazing uh, team um, that has worked on uh, a new design for transportation and actually raced that at uh, the um, uh, at the uh, Paradigm Hyperloop uh, competition. Uh, in Southern California on a track that uh, Elon Musk built on the SpaceX campus. Uh, so lots of possibilities and we encourage our students as their as freshman year to get involved because it's an opportunity for them to meet um, upper class students, to meet faculty, and to um, uh, develop their leadership skills as they go forward. Now, um, a couple of student profiles um, Elizabeth Wig, uh, who uh, graduated last year. She did two amazing co-ops, uh, one at Draper Labs, one at NASA. Um, she's very active in Society of Women Engineers, uh, president of IEEE, um, a number of uh, very prestigious awards, including uh, the Goldwater Scholarship and the NSF Graduate Research Fellowship. Uh, and she's now um, at Stanford pursuing her PhD. Um, I'd also like to uh, let you know that we highly encourage all of our students to get involved and try a global opportunity. Um, and these are some of the ways um, our students do that. Uh, for example, a dialogue of civilization is done in the summer. And uh, the picture you see here is a group of um, civil and environmental engineers uh, traveling to India, uh, taking two courses during one of their summer sessions and getting uh, full credit for the two courses uh, in um, looking at uh, environmental impact and uh, the policies related to it. So one technical uh, engineering course and one um, uh, elective uh, social science course. Um, there is the possibility of traditional study abroad. It's typically done during your junior year of your fall or spring semester. Uh, we do have, as I mentioned before, opportunities to do co-ops um, abroad. And um, some of our student groups do go uh, global. Um, our Engineers Without Borders uh, does work um, in Honduras, in Africa. 
so um, opportunities to go abroad, which we really think uh, every student should try to do. Um, another student uh, I'd like to profile is uh, Michael Torme. Uh, he did a, a double major uh, in both civil engineering and economics. Uh, he took advantage of the Dialogues of Civilizations and actually um, was able to go to Singapore, Indonesia, India, and Tokyo. Uh, he did his co-ops um, at a number of different uh, companies and uh, government uh, agencies, which helped him develop his uh, civil engineering skills, uh, but also uh, the skills that uh, brought him to apply and then receive the Marshall Scholarship. So um, he's been at the University of Leeds uh, in London. Uh, we also have opportunities for students to get involved in research as early as their freshman year. There are 17 multidisciplinary research centers and institutes, and those are just in the College of Engineering. And um, we have a fair every um, a fall, usually at the end of September, beginning of October, where students go uh, from table to table, sort of in a career fair format. Uh, we hold it in our Curry Student Center typically, and uh, the students will uh, meet and greet um, faculty and graduate students who are looking for students to join their research labs. So that's a great way to uh, connect up and figure out um, if there's something that you'd like to volunteer to be involved with. And um, one of uh, our uh, recent grads, Kritika Singh, who you did see in uh, the co-op video, um, recently graduated with a bioengineering degree, did extensive research at Mass General Hospital. Um, she received the Rhodes Scholarship, uh, Truman Scholarship, Goldwater Scholarship, really an incredible uh, leader uh, doing uh, research in malaria uh, and uh, is now at Oxford working on her PhD. And after uh, obtaining her PhD, she plans to go to uh, medical school. Uh, Macy Parchment, um, a third year student who is uh, majoring in chemical engineering. Uh, after her freshman year, she went uh, to the University of Sydney and did research there. Uh, she's uh, completed one co-op and uh, is a NACME scholar. Uh, she's very involved in the Black Engineering Student Society and uh, she actually is a work study supervisor in our connections lab. And yes, in the photo, there's a little kangaroo in the background. Um, so to conclude my part of the presentation, where do students go when they graduate? Uh, our students are so well prepared for all kinds of um, next steps, including um, industry, government sector, graduate school. We uh, usually have uh, up to 20% of our students go to full-time graduate programs, um, the prestigious uh, PhD programs all over the world. Uh, master's degrees uh, or uh, professional uh, programs such as going on to law school, medical school, MBA. Uh, really the engineering degree prepares you very well for any of these uh, next steps. Okay, we're ready for questions. Okay, thank you everyone. Rochelle, the first question we have is actually been submitted a few times. Um, could you please speak more to the plus one program? Specifically, do you have to take extra classes during your undergrad? Does it limit your ability to study abroad? Thank you. Sure, so um, as we mentioned, uh, and I'll just go back to the slide that shows you the uh, possibilities. Um, students can opt uh, and they usually um, select this uh, in their sophomore year, although it is possible to make this decision a little bit later, but because the curriculum um, is uh, involving taking some graduate courses uh, while you're an undergrad, uh, typically between two and four, um, and they satisfy your bachelor's degree and then are counted towards your master's. So it's a great deal, uh, both in terms of your time and financially. Uh, and you are able to do two co-ops uh, while you're working uh, on these degrees. Um, the courses um, would be the same number uh, as you would with the, the other programs. Um, of course, to do your four-year bachelor's or five-year bachelor's, you have to take the same courses 
in order to obtain that degree. So the uh, plus one, your bachelor's degree involves the same number of courses, but uh, if you want to think of it this way, you upscale to the graduate level for up to two or four of those courses. Thank you. Our next question is about the average class sizes for first and second years within the College of Engineering. If you could speak to that, please. Sure, I think I'll start and then let my colleagues jump in. Um, the average class size is 32 students, but it really varies depending on the type of class. Let me just go through these very quickly and say the intro to the study of engineering is like a freshman seminar. And that's about 20 students in the class. Uh, the Cornerstone 1 and the Cornerstone 2, which you see in the spring, uh, are both project-oriented, hands-on, uh, team-based courses and 30 students is uh, the typical class size. Uh, your math courses, Calc 1, Calc 2, Calc 3, Differential Equations, Linear Algebra, uh, those might be uh, 40, uh, 45 students, something in that range. Um, it's chemistry and physics um, and biology that would be the larger classes. Uh, and they're usually broken out to being um, a lecture, uh, maybe three times a week um, that may have 60 or 70 students in your lecture hall. But then um, these types of courses are broken down. So you do what's called an integrated learning session. And uh, that would be usually once a week for maybe two hours. And it would be with a group of 30 students. And that's where you might ask more um, uh, specific questions that you have, uh, work on homework together. Uh, quizzes are usually taken in that uh, uh, ILS. And uh, that's, uh, as I said, about 30 students. The labs for these courses are on average 30 students. College writing is typically 30 students. So that leaves really on this chart, the elective. And that's where you get the most variation. Depends on the type of elective you take. You could take a course like um, the History of Boston. It could be 25 students. You could take a course like Intro to Psychology, and that could be 200 students. Or you could take um, you know, a very popular course like Rock Music, and that might even have 300 students in it. Uh, but you would know um, class size uh, possibilities uh, before you registered for it. So if it made a difference to uh, your decision, uh, you would go into it knowing that. Rich or, or uh, Sue, would you like to add anything to that? Uh, I think you did well, Rochelle. I agree, you hit it, it's, it varies. Mm -hmm. um, many classes are smaller or medium sized. Um, as you get into your upper class, sometimes those can get even smaller, but there's gonna be variety depending on the, on the class. Our next question is for the whole group. Can you expand on what international research opportunities are like and how we can get involved with them? Rich, you're probably the best to lead off. Sure, no problem. Great question. So we have a unique uh, ecosystem again here when it comes to undergraduate research. It actually starts as early as your first uh, semester in the fall. And we then do the same for the NUN students in the spring when they arrive on campus after having been abroad that first semester. And so we have a unique resource where uh, students can actually attend a lab fair that is hosted by the Undergraduate Research and Fellowships Office here at Northeastern in order to be able to expose students to what faculty are doing as it relates to research. And then that provides an opportunity for you to be able to consider if some of those research areas are of interest to you. And so students can then start to look at participating in research as early as that uh, freshman year. Then we also have the opportunity for students to engage in what's called uh, directed study for research. And so that's typically available as early as the second semester of your first year. And that presents an opportunity for you to do research with a faculty member with an agreed upon uh, level of outcomes. And then you actually will earn credit towards your degree requirements through a general elective that's built into your curriculum. And usually those are one to four credit uh, commitments or directed study. So essentially it would replace a required course uh, for a general elective. And then last but not least, 
we engage students to start looking at REUs, research experiences for undergraduates, which is an NSF funded opportunity at universities around the world. And in some cases, those universities are engaged in international research experiences with universities elsewhere. And so that presents opportunities for students to engage in international research. Last but not least, the dialogue of civilizations actually presents opportunities as in the case of uh, one of our faculty member who takes students to India and they actually focus on doing research and coursework in the area of climate change and global warming. And so students coming through that experience have actually been able to get publication acknowledgement because of the research and so presents an opportunity for them to not only do courses elsewhere through dialogue of civilizations, but to do research with faculty elsewhere. Same holds true for those students who may be going to Brazil uh, and focusing on renewable energy. Uh, faculty are doing research in those spaces as well. So there's a whole ecosystem that's built in as early as that first year for you to start taking advantage and engaging in undergraduate research. And I think um, Macy, the student in profile, did uh, her summer after her freshman year. Correct, in Australia. So yeah, she had sure. the opportunity. And so we've had students go to Australia, uh, China, um, South Africa. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's really a unique ecosystem, again, that we've developed for students to take full advantage of. Yeah. And that's specifically to do research. And Correct. I wanted to bring up two other students, um, Bradley Priam, who you saw in the video, um, is a, uh, a very recent grad in um, chemical engineering. Uh, he did a research co-op at a pharmaceutical company in Germany. Um, it was an amazing experience for him. Well, he was an amazing student. Uh, he's now in the PhD program uh, at Johns Hopkins. And um, we have a student right now. Uh, her name is Hannah. And uh, she's on a research co-op at a university in Switzerland. Uh, yes, despite the pandemic, um, she took all the safety pro precautions. She got in an airplane, flew there in January, and uh, she's uh, been there uh, and uh, doing research. Uh, and uh, I've heard from her and she's, she's loving it. Really awesome. Thank you, everyone. We've got about three minutes left in session, and so I'm going to bundle a handful of the questions remaining in the Q&A into one. Um, several are asking for or how they receive a sample of a weekly schedule for this major or the other. Others are wondering when they can start speaking with academic advising. So if you could speak perhaps to when they can begin contacting your advising department, what to expect for next steps, I think that would be very helpful. Sure, I'll start and maybe Dean uh, Freeman can add to that. Um, at this point, uh, Dean Harris and I are happy to uh, try to answer your questions. Usually they're pretty specific and there are um, curriculum paths uh, on the web, uh, which can help illustrate uh, what your course plan would be. Uh, and we can talk to you and help you with how this could be adjusted if you have AP credit, IB credit, et cetera. So feel free to reach out to us. Um, and then uh, you'll be scheduled for orientation. And when you're in the summer orientation session, uh, academic advisors will actually uh, help you pick the specific courses for the fall semester. Yeah, I would echo that, that um, all, all programs are published. There's all, all sorts of ways um, that you can follow through depending on whether you're looking for four years, the combined majors are also published and to take a look at that um, and see what, what you have already that might change it and looking for, you know, oh, well, I wanna do a dialogue of civilization, starting to think about that, but you will at orientation get a lot more information. There's a lot of modules through orientation that will help you with that. And then your advisor will set up time with you and you will continue to meet with your advisor as you change um, that's the beauty of the flexibility of our programs. You might start out thinking this is a, a direction I want to go, but as you continue to learn more about opportunities and programs, then you will start to change your program of study. Um, it's yours and you have lots of opportunities to sort of make adjustments. So um, I did see someone ask about a weekly schedule. Uh, 
it's kind of just depends on majors, but you do want to think about um, every semester students take generally four, four credit courses. They meet a number of, you know, many hours a week and often sometimes a lab or a recitation. And that's a pretty typical schedule for, for everyone. It's a, you know, it's a full-time job five days a week. So. Yeah, and again, feel free to contact either Dean Harris or myself, or you see at the bottom of the screen, the opportunity to connect with an engineering student and we'll do our best to match you with somebody of a similar major to the one you're thinking of coming in with. So you can go to that uh, URL and uh, fill out a short form. I can answer a couple of quick things is you will be contacted about orientation. Someone asked about that and it, it you'll be contacted. It's coming, there'll be lots of them. Um, and then uh, somebody asked, it's a full year program. So uh, there is a break after your first year where there's a, a summer, though many students use that first summer as an opportunity. But then after that, most of your time would be alternated between being in school and going on co-op for six months. Um, so it becomes a very uh, full year program after, after that time. Sometimes there's a built-in break. We find most students are really happy to be going out on co-op, coming back to school. Um, but it is, it becomes a bit of a full year program, I guess you would call it. We and just to add to that quickly, very quickly, imagine when you're in a non-cooperative educational institution, your summers are usually spent trying to figure out how to get an internship. So we've built it in and it's part of our curricula and framework. So you're automatically going to have that opportunity as you would if you're trying to figure out how to get a summer job or an internship. We've built it in after a hundred years of developing yes. this, this model. Great. I think we're coming to the end. And uh, so we'd like to share with you again, our contact information, as you see here, for uh, Dean Reisberg and myself uh, to be able to follow up with any one-on-one -on -one questions you have. And then there's also an opportunity for you to visit our COE Northeastern EDU, talk to a COE student, where you can actually schedule an appointment to be able to have a chance to engage with a Northeastern current engineering student. And so we'd encourage you to take advantage of that. And then last but not least, as Dean Reisberg mentioned earlier, the undergraduate brochure that you see the link here for provides you a chance to get more information about the co-ops, about the different types of companies and the research, the global experiences. And so it's a really good comprehensive uh, brochure to answer some more of the questions that you might have. So thank you so much. And we appreciate you taking the time to join us today. So glad to have you. Thank you. Thank you.